morning or good afternoon, good evening, whatever the time of day you're watching this. I want to do um, to talk to you a little bit about mindfulness during um, what is turning out to be a very difficult period for a lot of ourselves um, at the moment with the coronavirus. And I fully understand now that you know some people who are watching this have put themselves into self isolation. Some people are just not going out. And what I want to do is people to understand when we have what is called a spiritual awakening, that's when we start to really understand and be part of our awareness. And we start to realize that we come off this autopilot and we come into this world where, you know, oof, what was that? What was that feeling? I don't understand. I thought I dealt with that. All of these emotions and shadow work that we've built over many, many years from repressed emotions, from traumas, from, from things that have happened in our lives where we couldn't deal with them at the time. We've just pushed them away. And we have this constitution now where our mind is thinking from right to left, not left to right. And when you think from right to left, you have this in, innate conditioning whereby everything needs to be uh, 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 and we set ourselves these really high levels of of perfection and standards and we have to realize that we're not meant to be perfect we are ourselves we are perfect i am perfect my 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 traits my bits and pieces are perfect for me as long as we understand that and we don't hold ourselves to these very high standards that when we don't reach them we hurt ourselves and that's a big problem. And I think the coronavirus in particular, not just the virus, but for every action there's a reaction. And the reaction is this. We've now got to sit, some people, in our houses in isolation for 7 to 14 days. Now this may expand or whatever. Now what that's going to do, well, we've got social media, we've got Netflix, we've got the TV, we've got all of these, we've got YouTube, we've got all these things. But there's going to be moments where... We've had enough of all of this. We just, oh, just gonna, I need to, I need to just sit for an hour, and we're going to sit with ourselves for the first time for many in many, many years. And what's going to happen is you're going to sit there and you're going to go, Ooh, "What's that? You know, I, don't, I feel a bit anxious. I feel a bit, you know, what's what's going on?" And that's because we start to check in with ourselves. We haven't checked in with ourselves for a very long time. What we've done is we've projected ourselves all the time to the outside world, and those projections are being amplified by what the outside world tells us we need to be projecting to. What I'm trying to say is, is that mindfulness has the ability for us to be able to reprogram our minds to be kind to ourselves. We have, every single one of us, has the capacity to learn, to change and to grow. And we can understand that the ideology of perfection that was set by front covers of magazines, social media, da 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 and on and on and on, isn't possible, but the perfection of ourselves, Julian Jenkins in this case, is me being the best I can be. And if I can achieve that, well, that's perfect. And for me, the way to do that and the way to transform our minds and our, our thought processes and the way we do things is through mindfulness. My journey with mindfulness was my dad passed in 2008, April the 28th, 2008, at 20 past eight. There's a lot of twos and eights in it. And if you're a numerologist or a spiritual person, you'll understand the significance of some of that. When he passed away, the physical pain was excruciating. The mental pain was even more. And I had to search for a psychiatrist or somebody to reach out to help me because I was having anxiety panic attacks, depression. You know, I was in a meeting once and I was talking to somebody and I was the commercial director of Cardiff City Football Club. And they were talking to me in the boardroom and I couldn't hear anything. I was going, it was all slowing down. I thought I was having a heart attack. I thought, whoop, Jules is out. I wasn't. I was having a panic attack. And for those people who've had true panic attacks, you'll understand what I mean by the rush. That rush from your centre of your your chest to every extremity is your body going into this fight or flight mode, which is what it's meant to do. Your mind is meant to keep us alive. And it's a good job because if I had to remember to breathe every five minutes or every two seconds, whatever it is, I wouldn't do a very good job at it. My mind, my conscious mind is is my subconscious mind is there to ensure that I live. 
ensure that if there's something wrong as we're going through at the moment your body is going into fight or flight because it's going we are under threat whether we are or not we can have an hour discussion on on how many people will pass through corona and i come back to the fact i want the minimum amount of losses but i want this to have the maximum amount of impact and as i said in my video yesterday i believe that empathy is rising when people say how are you now they actually mean it whereas before it was a throwaway opening line mindfulness when i went to see a psychologist and in particular she put me to a gentleman called john cabot zinn and i watched his videos and i watched his videos for you know, I was laying in bed after I got back because, you know, I was depressed. My dad had died. I was suffering with grief. I was a man, though. Surely I should have got over it. I was a man. Start manning up. What a load of cods wallop. Let the emotions out. Let the feelings out. But mindfulness, John Kabat-Zinn was talking about being present, being in the moment, paying attention. And he said three or four things about, you know... We dissect the past, we worry about the future. You know, you're never in the moment. When's the last time you checked in? In fact, stop. And be honest with yourself. I've been talking now for six minutes. How many times have you gone but come back? How many times have you thought of something else or gone back? Have you paused it to go and do something? Because that's what we do, but that's okay. Because some of the myths about mind meditation and mindfulness is, I can't do it, my brain's too active. It's not a problem. But what happens if I close my eyes and I see angels and all these things? It's not a problem. What happens, what if, what if, what if? There's, there's you know, there's, there's, they say there's seven myths to it all. What I want to be able to do, though, today is to say, let's do a 14-day challenge. And there's lots of them out there. But let's do a 14-day mindfulness challenge. So when we sit and we connect back in ourselves, because we're coming off the the circle, the cycle, we're coming out of this groundhog day, the wheel, and we sit and all of a sudden we have to feel these emotions and, and we get a bit anxious and depressed because, you know, our, our fight or flight meth mode is kicking in. Let's try and see whether we can truly make things work and change the way we think, like it did with my dad. Mindfulness saved my life, absolutely saved my life, when my dad died. It's about paying attention in the present moment. But more importantly than that, it's about paying attention with loving kindness to yourself. Do you know that 40%, 47% of our time, we're thinking about something else? That says nearly half of our life, we're not actually here. We're not actually in the moment. We're missing half of our life. And if we train our mind, if we can work with our mind to be right here, right now, being present, then we'll have so much more of our life. Now that's not easy. I'm not saying you're gonna be able to watch this video now and all of a sudden, bang, off we go. But I'd like us to do that. And in fact, I'd like you to stop right now, whatever you're doing. If you're doing anything that requires 100% concentration, please don't do this now. But if you aren't, then stop. Close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. Feel your feet on the ground. Put your attention to your both feet. What do you feel? Sense your body where you're sitting or where you're lying right now. Take a deep breath in. Notice your breath, feel your breath. Soften your face, just put attention to around your eyes and your cheeks and just let it soften. Just breathe in and out your normal path of breathing. Just be here in the moment. Now take a deep breath in. And when you do so, open your eyes. So you're back with me, okay? Just being in the present, all right, is hard because our minds wander, okay? And we judge ourselves with this. We say, I can't do meditation, it's rubbish. I, I can't sit still for... Five minutes, my nan used to say to me, you've got bloody ants in your pants. And, and that's what it is. But we judge ourselves then. I can't do it. And anyway, why are they doing it? You know, he's been sat over there meditating for half an hour. Haven't you got anything better to do? We project our feelings of not being able to meditate on other people who meditate. Okay. But practicing mindfulness is so important because what we practice actually grows stronger. And if we're practicing mindfulness when we're sat in this pose and we're 
following our breath and we're breathing in, breathing out. But at that moment, if we're feeling judgmental or we're feeling frustrated or we're feeling anxious, what we're actually practicing is anxiety, judgment and lack of patience. We can shape our brains. It's been absolutely scientifically proven. If we practice, what you practice grows stronger. You know, even taking it out of mindfulness, you know, is a Gary Player, the golfer, that says, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Top sportsmen practice every single day to be the best they can. They rewire their brains to be, when they're in that situation in front of gold, Ronaldo scores. Why? He's one of the most professional footballers, soccer players in the world because he practices. So we need to, you know, think about what we're doing. And over the next 14 days, I'd like you to do the meditation, simple meditation we just did. But also, I'd like you to understand that when we do pay attention, we do it with loving kindness. Even, even when we sit with ourselves now and just close our eyes and we just, if a thought comes in, love the thought. You know, if you think, oh, why am I going to do this? I'm bloody got a cough now or this. It's fine. I got a cough. It's no problem. Loving kindness. I'll be fine. Okay. We practice it all the time. We need to keep it growing. Mindfulness works. It decreases stress. It helps us sleep better. It dampens the fight or flight when we really don't need it. And what I want you to do, really, is when we put ourselves in these huge um, bubbles, we do it with this high expectation and ambition and perfection. When we don't get there, we cover ourselves in shame and frustration and judgment. And you've got to remember that shame and judgment and frustration dampens your brain's ability to be able to learn, to be able to transform, to be able to grow. What we want to do is we want to actually say, we feel no shame, we feel good, everything's great. Even when it's not, just have those moments. It'll be fine, it'll pass. Coronavirus, it'll pass. Hopefully minimum amount of losses, maximum amount of impact. That's what I'm constantly talking about. But it's this loving kindness, because if we, if we give ourselves loving kindness, we, we, we release you know, all the endorphins, the dopamines that allow us to learn, allow us to, to transform, allow us to grow. Okay, and as I said earlier, empathy is rising. People are feeling it right. So what I want you to do is every day to do the next meditation. And this meditation is a loving kindness meditation. And it's going to take about 10 minutes. Okay, but we've got a bit of time on our hands now, some of us, because, you know, we are isolated. So press pause on Netflix or on the PlayStation or whatever you're doing. Okay, just press pause. We're going to sit, and I'm going to put a nice image up. I'm going to play some background music, okay? And we're going to sit for about 10 minutes, and it's a loving kindness. So all I want you to do is just follow me. Listen to my words. Listen to how I tell you. And if you have a thought that comes in, welcome it. doesn't matter how good or bad it is. We, we try to hang on to the thoughts that we love, and we try and push away the thoughts that we don't like. Welcome it. Hang on to it. Love it and let it go it serves us no purpose we are not our thoughts John Kabat-Zinn says something which is you know thousands of things have happened in my life and some of them actually have because our thoughts tell us oh no it's gonna be this isn't it and actually what's the reality of the situation okay so I want you to close your eyes I'm gonna put a nice image up and I'm gonna sound a bell for us to start and all I want you to do now is focus on your breath. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. And just focus on where your breath is. Where do you feel it most? Is it through your nostrils? Is it on your t-shirt? Is it on your jumper? Where do you feel? Do you feel your, your belly moving in and out? Breathing in and breathing out. And to start this, we're going to offer loving kindness to ourselves. And I want you to focus on the intention of these words. And I want you to continually repeat these words. And if you have a thought that comes in, you welcome it, you love it, you let it go, and you come back to the mantra. So as we're breathing in, I want you to say these words. Breathing in, may I be safe. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I be happy. Breathing out. 
Breathing in, may I be healthy. Breathing out. Breathing in, may I live with ease. Breathing out. Repeat the mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Continue that mantra as you're breathing in and you're breathing out. And if you have any thoughts that come in, you welcome them, you love them, you let them go, and you come back to your mantra. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease. Welcome this beautiful love into your life, to be kind to yourself, to connect in with yourself, to love yourself, to heal yourself. May I be safe, may I be happy, may I be healthy. May I live with ease. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now what I'd like you to do is just, with your eyes closed, choose someone in your life that you love or someone that inspires you, someone you think about, who you're grateful for. And I want you to picture that person in your mind. And on this occasion, as you're breathing in, you say simply, may you be safe. May you be happy. May you be healthy. May you live with ease. This is loving kindness for somebody else who is Someone you love, someone inspires you, put them in your mind, see them and set the intention of may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. And don't forget, if you have a thought, just let it welcome in. Hold it. Don't put any judgment on it. Accept it, acknowledge it, let it go and come back to your mantra for this person that you love. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Now the focus, we're going to focus on someone you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, maybe someone who's ill, and we're going to offer them kindness. So if there's somebody you know who is in self-isolation or isn't feeling very well at the moment, and we need to place their, your intention in your mind, with them in your mind, and you say again, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Breathing in and breathing out. This is somebody who you know who's having a difficult time at the moment, who may be ill. Set the intention of that person, put them in your mind's eye. And as you do, you say to yourself, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. And if you find your attention or your mind wanders, don't worry. Just love it, let it go, and return back to your phrases, your mantra. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. These mantras are now your anchor. May you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy, and may you live with ease. Mm -hmm. 
And what I'd like you to do is choose someone in your life that you might have difficulty with or have some tension with or have had an issue with or something hasn't sat right between the both of you for a little bit of time. This one can be difficult, but we set the attention and we put them in our mind's eye and we say to them in our mantra, breathing in and breathing out, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy and may you live with ease. And again, if something, a thought comes in, I want you to allow it in, accept it, acknowledge it, put no judgment, love it and let it go and come back to your anchor, your mantra. For the person who you may have had difficulty with, have had an argument with, there's some tension between you. Set the attention, put them in your mind's eye and say, may you be safe, may you be happy, may you be healthy and may you live with ease. And if at any point you find that difficult, then you can just direct it back to yourself. May I be safe. May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I live with ease. Now I'd like you at this moment to direct your loving kindness, your attention and your intention to all forms of life, people, animals, all beings, those people who need it most all over the world at this very difficult time. And I want you to say for them, may all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease. Breathing in, and breathing out and again if you have any thoughts you let them in you let them go and off you go may all beings be safe may all beings be happy may all beings be healthy may all beings live with ease breathing in and breathing out may all beings be happy may all beings be healthy may all beings be live with ease May all beings be safe, may all beings be happy, may all beings be healthy, may all beings live with ease. Take a deep breath in and as you do, I just want you to slowly just recenter yourself on the chair and get your sense of awareness and feel your twiggle your fingers or, or move your toes and come back into the room and open your eyes. I hope you enjoyed that. That's something we need to do every day. Okay. This is day one. Day two we do it. We do it for 14 days. There's something else I would like you to do as well. Is when you wake up in the morning, all right, I want you to put your hand on your heart and say, Good morning, Julian. Okay, I want you to start showing love and kindness and compassion and empathy to yourself. Good morning, Julian. Okay, do it with gratitude, do it with love. Feel your heart. We know again, scientifically, by doing this, you release good hormones, good, good and, and dopamines. Okay, and if you really feel like doing it, okay, then place your hand on your heart and say, Good morning. I love you, Julian. Good morning. I love you, Julian. Now that takes a little bit more work. But still start with, good morning, Julian. But when you feel the time is right, you say, good morning. I love you, Julian. Show yourself that kindness. Help yourself through the day. So tomorrow morning, start with, good morning. But if you feel really brave, why not say, good morning. I love you, Julian. Obviously, don't say Julian, because... Not your, that's not your name. You can say your own name. Good morning. I love you. Your name. I hope this has helped. Um, I'll pop back on tomorrow and we'll do a bit more. Um, but just focus our attention on loving kindness and being here in the moment and realize that, you know, everything will pass. 
If we listen to the experts, if we get our immune system as high as we can, if we can check in with ourselves if we're in isolation and don't bring the fear, the anxiety, because fear, anxiety, stress lowers your immune system. Use the loving kindness. And even the one we did at the beginning where we said just close your eyes and feel your feet. If you're feeling anxious, close your eyes and just say the mantra to yourself. You know, just sit there and say, may I be safe? May I be happy? May I be healthy? May I live with ease? Just breathe it through. So when if you get this feeling coming in, so, oh, I don't feel, may I be safe? May I be happy? May I be healthy? May I live with ease? It's a very simple structure that we can do. And don't forget, good morning, Julian. I love you. Thank you very much for watching. If you can put your comments below, please share it, subscribe to the channel. Let's get this out there so when people are sitting in isolation, they can do it by learning mindfulness. So when they come out of my, uh, uh, isolation, the world will be a better place, I can assure you. I hope the coronavirus has the minimum amount of losses and the maximum amount of impact and empathy is rising. God bless you. Be love and give love. Take care. Bye-bye.